Hi, hi everyone. My name is Colette Matriga. Welcome to Colette's Thermic Kitchen. Um, tonight we are going to be making some date scones. They're rather delicious and let me warn you, they are a tad moorish. Scones. 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 <laughs> scones or scones. Which way do you say it? I'm not sure. Scones. <laughs> and how we're making those. Um, so for those of you who haven't been on before, my name is Colette Matriga. I'm a Thermomix consultant with customers all over Australia. If you are thinking of upgrading or getting one of these beauties in your kitchen, please reach out. I'd love to support you on that journey. I had two beautiful people buy a Thermomix today from me and I'm really looking forward to supporting them. One was from Gladstone, the other one was from down in Melbourne. So welcome to the Thermomix family. You are going to have so much fun. And just as a reminder, if you're actually buying at the moment, before the 12th, you'll be able to get an extra bowl blade lid for just $29. Okay, let's get back to these date scones. Now the Thermomix is fabulous. Scones. For baking, you don't have to do that all the way through this. Well, Christina just says, I'm with Andrew. Oh, Scones. You guys, you're always with Andrew. <laughs> all right. Um, so, as always, I will put the recipe up for you. It'll be up on my Facebook page first thing tomorrow morning. So, you can actually print that out and add it to your collection. Um, and um, let's get going. Very, very easy and yummy to make. So you can make this in your TM6 or your TM5, which is great. Now the very first thing we're going to do is I like to just add a little bit more flavour to my date scones. Scones. <laughs> Stop it, Andrew, you're being warned. <laughs> and um, I'm actually going to start off by popping See, in... Janet says, I'm with Andrew too. <laughs> I'm going to be popping in the <laughs> zest of one orange. Now we all know that in the Thermomix we don't have to get the zester out, the Thermomix does all that for us. So I've just peeled thin strips for, from one orange and they're going to go in. And to zest that, all I need to do is to whiz that up for probably about um, six seconds will be fine at speed 10. <laughs> Some a couple of big pieces, we just go again. I'm going to scrape that down and I'm going to go again. I just want to show you oh my gosh, I love the smell of fresh zested anything. So it's a bit too big, so you probably want to go for about 10 seconds. Maybe 10 would be good, but you know, it just shows the flexibility of the Thermomix. Of course, we've got over 88,000 guided um, dishes. But we've also got the option to create our own. So I'm just going to go for seven, that'll be fine. Let's be ten. Meryl says stone. Christine says stone. Excellent. All right. Just... Did you wish everyone a happy new year? Um, I did that on my last slide. That was last year. I love new, I love new year. I love actually new year. No, your last live was last year. Christmas. And um, yeah, that looks good now. This is the first one in this year. Mm. And lots of people saying Happy New Year. So. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I love New Year, all those different goals and resolutions and things. And she's talking about goals. Meal planning is a great one to have if you haven't got that already as a goal. And for all my uh, customers that bought Thermomixes from me in the last few months, the My Orientation Program details have gone out to you, they've been emailed, and one of the modules that we do together is about meal planning, and gosh, if you get to grips with that, it's just so liberating. Let me just use that word, it's fabulous. All right, so the zest of one orange has gone in. Now to this, I'm just gonna add a whole bunch more ingredients. So first of all, some flour. Now I'm actually using self-raising flour, um, because I had some in the, in the cupboard. If you've just got plain flour, just remember the, the equation is one teaspoon of baking powder added to 150 grams of plain flour is going to create that self-raising flour. Now, with this particular dish, I want to increase that leavening experience or have my, 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 my scones just rise up a little bit more. So I'm also going to add in a teaspoon of baking powder. So that's why sometimes like banana bread is a classic. You'll see the recipe and it says in the recipe, plain flour and baking power, powder. And we all know it rises and we often think, well, why don't we just use self-raising flour? It's because in the mix, sometimes we want more than that standard 
one teaspoon to 150 grams of plain flour. Did you understand all that, Andrew? No, I'm just concentrating on all people's <laughs> comments. <laughs> all right, so, um, so I've just added that extra teaspoon of uh, baking powder in here. Now also to this mix, just a small amount of sugar, and you can absolutely leave this sugar out if you want to. Um, it's 30 grams. Um, and um, I just, I like it in, you know I have a sweet tooth. And that's caster sugar, which I've made myself in my Thermomix. You know I only buy granulated and make my own caster sugar. It's half the price. Now um, to this, we're also going to add some salt. And just be aware that when you're using self-raising flour, self-raising flour does actually have salt in it. Um, but I still like that kick of salt, so I'm still putting in a teaspoon of, of um, salt. And sometimes that will determine whether you're using salted or unsalted butter in your baking. Now, one of the other um, hints of flavour that I love to introduce into my date scones, scones. scones is um, some mixed spice. And I've just got half a teaspoon. I don't want it to be powerful. I just want it to hum in the background with that orange. You want it to hum? I want it to hum in the background with the orange. And of course, we need dates for our date scones. I've got about 150, 160 grams. I've chopped these in the Thermomix and um, I'm just going to add these in. You could get away quite happily using just 100 grams, um, but I, I like quite a lot of, of different grapes. Now, they do stick together a little bit. Until Where do you get the dates from? Are they freshly picked from the garden? Of course. <laughs> well, actually, on that point, um, I went to Woolies today because um, I used up my dates over Christmas to get some more dates and they didn't have any. So I popped to Aldi next door. I got a humongous bag of, of dates for like $2.50 or something. I, I couldn't believe it. Prices are really quite good there. Um, so we've got lots of dates. So that's gone in and that's all I want to add in there at the moment. So I'm just going to mix those together. And I'm going to go for um, literally about five seconds will be enough. Five, six seconds. Let's go six. At speed five. Alright. So this is, this is not a cookie dough recipe? This isn't a cookie dough recipe. It's my own recipe. Uh, which I've been making for quite some time. So I'm just going to have a look. Will you, you post this recipe? Oh, I've forgotten. To add something. It's still in the fridge. That butter? Yes, bear with me one second. I knew that. <laughs> How did you know that? So will this recipe go up shortly? Yeah, it'll go up tomorrow morning. So I've only got a little bit of butter here and just in little cubes. It must be cold going in and um, it's important that it is cold. If you're in a very hot environment, please take it out of the fridge at the very last minute. Salted or unsalted? Uh, this one is um, half and half. It's, it's not as salted as most, but you can choose whatever you want. So if you don't like salt, just go for unsalted. So I'm just going to blitz it again for five seconds. Well, you put some salt in already, didn't you? I did, but I like it. <laughs> Let's have a look now, it'll look a bit better. So it's going to be a bit bread crummy in consistency at the moment. That's better. So have a little look here. So you can see those dates and everything has all been well mixed through. So I'm happy with how that's all kind of mixed together. That's exactly as I want. So now I'm just going to add in my liquids. And I've got some milk. I've got 175 grams of milk. So I'm going to add that full cream. You know, um, sometimes you'll make dates with, sorry, scones with like lemonade for a much lighter one. Sometimes you do part cream, part milk. There's so many different options out here, but I just love full cream milk and one egg. I don't think the egg is quite traditional, but I love the richness that it actually gives these. So the egg's gone in and the milk has gone in. And now I'm going to get the thermomix to um, just knead these. So I'm going to go into the kneading function and I'm just going to go for 20 seconds and then I'll check it. So how many scones will this make? This will make 12 scones, which will be rather delicious. Can you use buttermilk instead of full cream milk? You can, you can use almost any liquid. You could use 
hot orange juice, etc. But um, yeah, you, you could. Um, and whatever you use is going to impact on the flavour. So buttermilk is going to give it a bit more sourness. So the mixture is going to be a little bit sticky and a bit messy, but that's what you want. And the secret is to handle it as little as possible. So here we go. Can you make it there. without the egg? Uh, yeah, a lot of recipes don't have an egg in, but again, if you're missing bits and pieces out, and it's not because of a dietary need, you're going to alter the taste. So just remember that. So I'm just going to whiz this out, and there's going to be bits stuck to the bottom, because it's a very kind of sticky, wet kind of dough. What oh, a lovely comment from Julian. Julian, Julian, mm -hmm. Julian. Says hi from Julen, Arkless and Tazzy. Oh. Do you remember Julen? Julen? Julen, yeah. Julen. I can't stop watching you. Oh. <laughs> that was a lovely comment. I'm so glad I picked you to buy my new Thermi. You're a great consultant. Yay. And Thank you me. even got two kisses. Oh. So don't forget, um, make sure you've got that email from me with all these lovely classes um, that I do just for my customers that are going to really help you get the most out of your Thermomix. Um, there's some really cool ones. So the modes one is a particularly fun one. You get to really understand how to use all those modes. So Julen, where in Tazzy are you? Okay, so that's our mixture. And now what I need to do is just to flour my hands. And flour on oh, here, just a good bit of flour. And basically, all I want to do is to pat this out, handling it as little as possible, get your rolling pin, and I quite like my scones a little bit crunchy, so I tend to bake them a bit longer and cut them a bit thinner, so they're almost like a biscuity like. But any, anywhere between two and three, centimeters is a great way to to roll out so that's going to be fine so i've got a six centimeter cutter here you want to make sure it's, it's a nice deep cutter for your scones just flouring that up and it's a case of just literally down you don't want to screw you know screw them around or tw twist them around you want to just make sure you're going up and down and um that's perfect so izzy meadows so, has entered the building so that's kind of what we're looking for. Hi, Izzy. <laughs> Hi, Izzy. So Izzy was um, a really good and dear friend of mine. She still is a very good and dear friend of mine. Um, and uh, she had her Thermomix, loved it, upgraded from the TM5, and then just enjoyed it all so much that last year she decided she would become a consultant. And she is having such a fun time in her own little business. And that's one of the wonderful things about being a consultant. I mean, I've been a consultant now for five years, so not a huge amount of time, but I absolutely enjoy it. I mean, I wouldn't still be here if I didn't love the company, love the product. Um, it is, in my opinion, a product that everyone should have in their kitchen. And um, I just love sharing what it can do. So why doesn't the cutter cut the silicon mat? Um, because I'm not really forcing it down and it's not overly sharp. Okay, so just pulling this back together again, just nice and rough. I'm not worried about little cracks in the top, it's going to be fine. So just down and up. Remember, not twisting, not turning. Okay, let's get this last little two together. So this one's going to be uh, 11, I think. So it just depends how thick. And you'll notice when I'm putting them on my my uh, my oven tray, I've got the silicon liner on, so I don't need to worry about flouring or or greasing that bottom. What um, I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting them kiss, so they're just slightly kissing each other. Comment there, Andrew. <laughs> No. I thought you. And the last one, what I tend to do is just into a circle, and I kind of put it into the cutter, and just press that out. So and it's there's number the twelve. Number twelve. Okay. So that's, I do that's that's the one. run to the litter. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to whiz this away. I mean, the great thing with this recipe is, is someone phones you up and says, "Hey, I'm coming over. I'm on my way." 
it takes you 25 minutes from start to the very end where you can be eating these and that is absolutely fabulous now i just need to go and grab a little bit of milk one second there she goes <laughs> director's nightmare brush the top with milk so people often say well which should I do eggs should I do milk you can do any um, now when you're brushing the top what you want to make sure is that you are just brushing the top you are not letting it go down the sides so just like your souffles when you actually um, grease the mold you want to make sure you're not going down the side because it will stop it rising you know what's going to happen now, you're going to get a phone call saying, I'm 25 minutes away, I'm just popping over. <laughs> um, but that is it, and, and you know, it's such a lovely, delicious thing to have on the table. Warm scones, straight from the oven, with dates in, yum. Lots and lots of butter. So, um, di main difference between, and a little bit of sugar just on top. The main difference, this gives it a little bit of a crunch, you do not have to have this if you don't want to, I just enjoy it. The main difference between egg and milk as a wash is that the egg will make it glossy, but both of them will let them go brown. So these are now going to go into a preheated oven, 180 fan, 200 conventional, and um, they're going to need, I, I usually do them for about 15 minutes, so anywhere from about 12 to 18 minutes. So you just need to keep an eye on them after about that 10 minute mark. And you'll know when they're done because, they're going to be nice and hollow. So, let me know in the chat if you want to have a look at a finished one. Anyone let me know, Andrew? What's that? Does anybody want to see a finished one? Well, of course they do. <laughs> You've got them sitting here, it's so obviously going to show them. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, here's a batch that I made earlier on today. And you can see they're just so delicious. Um, and we've got that crunchiness as you bite into them and to tell whether they're cooked that nice hollow sound underneath so that's the actual scones and just breaking them apart you can actually see how glorious these are now um, I love to smother these in butter lots and lots of butter absolutely delicious but of course these will be beautiful with cream clotted cream jam and the other great things about these is that these can freeze beautifully which is why I don't mind making an extra batch because when I go to visit my son this week I'm going to bring him a batch which I'm going to pop in the freezer once they've cooled down. Do you know Janet you're absolutely right I was just thinking about it just like watching Blue Peter. Is it, was Blue Peter here in Australia? Here is here's some we made earlier. Well, you want to see what you do. So Good old John Noakes. They've got the beautiful orange, a little bit of um, uh, mixed spice, and they're just delicious. So I'm going to post that recipe tomorrow. Please have a go and let me know. Show me your photographs. And um, if you don't want them quite as brown, you just take them out a few minutes earlier. As I said, I like to take mine to the edge. I like to have that real crustiness on the outside. Um, so there you go, that's my beautiful date scones with a hint of spice and orange. Scones. 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 <laughs> Any other questions there, Andrew? No. Okay, fantastic. Well, everybody, you have a beautiful evening. Thank you for popping into Colette's Thermy Kitchen. I look forward to catching up with you next time. Just thinking about our masterclass for this month. I've got a few ideas there. Um, I might put it out to you, but I'm thinking we want something that's going to challenge us a little bit. And I'm thinking maybe an apple strudel. Yum could be something the pastry is something to master it is a master class anyhow so thank you everyone i will see you again real soon bye for now you can't have any of these andrew i know um so yum absolutely beautiful you can take some to jack this week yeah i'm going to take some up to jack he'll, leave, he'll love the he... scones scones yes <laughs> <laughs> okie dokie okay